everyone! Today we're going to be talking about the processing times for the K-1 fiancé visa. If you've seen our other videos, we talked about filing the I-129F packet and we've also talked about our personal timeline of when we got all of our notices. But a lot of you have been asking about the processing time specifically and also if there's a way to check the status of your application uh, to kind of get an idea of when you might hear. In short, the answer to that is no, there isn't really an accurate way to get a real-time um, feedback on where your application is and when you can expect to hear. But today I'm just going to go through a few tips that I found helpful to kind of gauge it and get an idea of when I might hear back and get my NOA too. So first, before we begin, don't forget to give us a like or comment below if you have any questions on anything that I talk about in this video. It helps us to obviously um, keep doing these videos for free and giving you guys more information and we obviously want to hear from you. Um, so let's start. So the first thing that was helpful to me when I was going through the process, I know that it can be kind of nerve-wracking because you just don't hear anything and are just waiting for something in the mail, but the first NOA notice that you receive um, will look like this and I'm gonna point out a few things on this the first being in the top left corner you'll see the receipt number and so this number you can actually use to create an account online on the USCIS website and try and track the status of your application so to do that basically you can just go to Google and type in USCIS um, USCIS case status and then click on the first link which will take you to the USCIS website. So basically um, whenever you go or whenever you're clicking on the links just make sure that you are going to the USCIS website to make sure all the information that you're getting is accurate and correct. Um, but this is the website here and so as you can see it says enter receipt number. So from that um, notice and receipt number that we saw on the NOA one you just take that number and enter it in and then as you can see you can check the status so basically you click that and then it'll give you kind of an update um, what I found was that personally I didn't find this to be the most insightful because basically it just tells you we received your application and it's being processed so there's not really like a live feedback sort of a thing where you can see um, what stage exactly your application is in. It'll basically just kind of say, hey, we got it and we're working on it. So for me, this um, wasn't necessarily the best tool, but it is available obviously for you to use and you can kind of check back and see um, any updates from time to time. Um, to get more of an idea in terms of timeline, um, I actually also use the USCIS website and so this would be my second tip which is to, again, if you can't remember the link, just go to Google and you can look up USCIS processing times. And so here you can again click on that first link and then you just want to make sure again that you're on the USCIS website. So this is what the page will look like when you click on it. And then basically um, you can just verify again you're on the right page. You can click on the left. You'll see check processing times and the page will pretty much look the same. But if you scroll to the bottom here, this is where you can start to see a timeline of actual dates of applications that are being processed. So with this, um, you actually can go back to um, your NOA1. And if you take a look on the bottom, it'll actually tell you what USCIS office and service center is processing your application. So there's a few different ones around the country and your application will be forwarded probably to the one um, closest to where you live. Um, so for us, it was in California because we live in California. But again, just check your notice to see what office is processing your application. So with that information, you can go back to the USCIS website and you can see here this drop down gives you all of those different locations. And basically the important thing to know about this is based on demand, all of the different centers are going to have different processing times. So um, cross your fingers and hope that you got the one that has the shortest time period. But basically you just want to 
select whatever office you have or whatever service center and you can click here the processing dates and this will give you a live timeline of what dates they're currently working on um, applications for. So as you can see in this office here, the I-129F um, for K-1, K-2 visa processing, they're currently processing applications for June 1st, 2017. So if you submitted your application prior to this date, then you should have already heard or gotten your NOA-2. Um, otherwise, if you processed or submitted your application after this date, then you won't hear yet. But as you can see for right now, it's actually a fairly kind of lengthy time period. So right now they're still processing applications from June. So that's about seven months that people have probably been waiting to hear back from um, getting their NOA-1 to now getting the NOA-2. So just for other purposes, we'll check some of the other service centers. Um, so the California service center here. Um, you can see for K-1 and K-2 visas, June 27, 2017. So again, um, a couple months back that they're still processing these applications. And we'll just check one more just for fun. So if you had an application that was sent to Nebraska, then your I-129F um, from April, so even further back. So basically, um, that's kind of a long time period, but basically Nebraska is still processing back from April, which is kind of crazy. So again, um, in short, when you're asking, you know, how long does it take, there's obviously a few factors that come into play. First off is how well you're completing up the application, making sure that everything's correct and not getting that request for evidence because that will delay the process. And then in this case, the other factor is what service center your application has been sent to because as you can see, the times will vary based on the demand and I guess the workload of that particular service center. So it really can depend on all of those things. Um, but hopefully, we hope that you guys get your application or hear something back really soon. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, give us a like, and we will talk to you guys soon.